want us to turn to the message that we have today. Thriving in crisis and transitions. This Sabbath is a Sabbath dedicated to golden ages. A beautiful name coined for those of us who have retired and above 65 years old, who are quite a number in our congregation. May I ask that they stand wherever they are and wave to us this wonderful servants of the Lord. Please stand. The golden age 65 and above, led by my elder Mitoko, who prayed. Please rise, look at them. These soldiers of the cross, please let's wave. Let's wave to them. What do we say to them? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Um, at this juncture, allow me to take you to an illustration. I picked it from the book by C.S. Lewis, The Horse and the Boy, Chronicles of C.S. Lewis, The Horse and the Boy. Excuse me. This story tells of a land that is called Narnia, a land where even beasts talk, a land where peace prevails, a land of beautiful mountains and meadows. But between this land and the place where Rabadash, who is a prince who fell in love with a princess in Narnia and desired to marry her by pretending to be good while he was in Narnia. But when he went back into his homeland, he changed completely and behaved in Dashban, just like any common person in Dashban or people outside Narnia. This princess who had been flattered discovered that Rabadash was just lying and she decided to plan to escape and she escaped. Because of this escape, Rabadash persuaded his father to allow him go to Narnia and to fight so that he could get back this girl whom she loved and felt that he could not continue living without her. Rabadash took 200 horsemen on their horse and they crossed a huge desert. Luckily, the boy and the horse, and then a girl who also was a princess who was running away from forced marriage, together joined in this journey. And the donkeys happened to be the talking donkeys of, of Narnia. Now, 
when this team got to a dash barn, they discovered that there was this princess was held hostage and they wanted to run away and they discovered the plan and discovered that Rabadash was going to retaliate and fight in Anya. They hurried quickly through the desert and managed to get to warn the first, the first city in Anya where Rabadash was going to stage a fight. So, by the time Rabadash reached there, people were prepared and the gates were closed. Fight ensued and within no time, Rabadash and his team were defeated and Rabadash was taken captive. But because Nanians were people of decency, even this captive was not executed and they wanted to release him, but he was daring anyone to fight him. And then Aslan, who happened to be the king in Anya, was enraged and turned Rabadash into a donkey and sent him back. And with his donkey-like nature, he was sent as quickly as possible through a ship and he got to the shore of Dashban. And he was told, you will be able to be a king one time, but in case after you become a king and you be turned into your former image, if you dare cross the boundary, you are going to be turned into a donkey again. It is because of this warning and the experience he had as a donkey that Dashban had the most peaceful king in Rabadash when he ascended to be king. Friends, we live in this world the world of many changes, transitions, and crises. We move, and the only thing that we can say is constant is change in our life. And so, in this world of crises and transitions, somehow men forget that they live but for a short time, that their confinement is still in this world, and with pride, they seem to want to live and try to conquer even other outer spaces in their pursuit of making a name. And like this Rabadash, most of us are full of ourselves. But today, I want to let us know that despite the changes that we have in this world, as the faithful men and women who believe in a better world where people are treated with dignity, we can thrive even despite the transition and the crisis in this world. We have God with us and we have the testimony such as we read in the book of Daniel which I invite you to come with me to think about it. Friend, to thrive is to excel, is to be able to dominate it's to be able to flourish, to do well. And how can we thrive? How can we be 
well. Carry on peacefully. Be at our best state despite the transition and the crisis that are all around us. This is the question that puzzles many when those who have been hit and hit again, those who have suffered pain, those who are sick, those who have many infirmities, continue to praise the Lord despite what is going on in their life. It is this that gives testament that there is a power that keeps the ship stable despite the storms that are around it. And with Jesus in the vessel, we can smile at the storm. My friend, my brother, my, follow, my fellow audience who are following from many forums, when life seemed to be giving us a lemon, when we expected the best with all the struggles that we have made, educating our children only for them to turn our backs and to follow their own ways, when we struggle and pray and we hope that our loved ones will grow to their full age only to lose them, when even like in this beginning of this year, one of us gave a testimony of how the Lord sustained and healed her only a few weeks. A few weeks before the month end. We were told of our demise. How heart wrenching, how painful, how sorrowful that is. Imagine of Elder, Elder Dano Soro, who a few days ago could tell or even preach the gospel, preach his hope to the pastors when he was visited. This man who was full of life singing in the choir, having lost his wife, a year later, he has to follow. Yet, in this crisis and the transitions that come in life, the man who trusts in God can thrive. Those who remain to sojourn on, the families of those whose loved ones rest in the dust can rise up from grief and continue to sing and witness to the faithfulness of the living God. This is the resilience that come from the Lord who himself give those, keep those who are faithful in perfect peace. It is this that we see in Daniel 6. I invite you to the text, Daniel 6. And allow me to read from verse 1 to 11. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be over the whole kingdom. And over these three governors, of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps might give account to them so that the king would suffer no loss. Then, this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave 
thought to setting him over the whole realm. So the governors and the satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no charge or fault because he was faithful. No, was there any error or fault found in him? Then this man said, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. So, these governors and satraps thronged before the king and said this to him, King Darius, live forever. All the governors of the kingdom, the administrators and satraps, the counselors and advisors have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whoever petitions any god or man for 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the degree and sign the writing so that it can be it can be changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. Therefore, King Darius signed the written degree. Sign the written degree. Friends, this world, like Dashban, like Rabadash, who could at will want to wage war with another kingdom? This world, with men who are full of jealousy, envy, and all sorts of ambition, trying to use whatever means, at times use flattery to win their way where they want to trap those whom they cannot find fault with. Yet the text tells us in verse 10 that now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since his early days. Praise the Lord. Those who are faithful, those who worship God are not afraid of what men may scheme or plan or try to do because they know when they cry to God, the Lord hears and he can deliver. And even if he may allow that his believers those who love him, his saints, may enter even in the furnace. The Lord will be with them in the furnace. And so we can thrive even through and in crisis and the transitions of life that may be in your life now. The Lord knows and when we, despite the plans to make decrees against our worship of the true God, when we continue worshiping and counting the praises and the worship of the Lord to be more than life, the Lord will honor and fight our battles. It is this that Daniel 
tells us crises are defined as time of intense difficulty or danger it might be demonstrated in matters health economy catastrophes or calamities this word crisis is also crisis or crisis in Greek. And it comes from the word krenaim, which krenaim, which means to judge or to decide. Or krino, which means judging. And so crisis requires decisive actions. It calls for proper thinking so that you choose the best which can bring the best results. No wonder God allows crisis in the life of his saints because in this crisis when they are beset their prayers are more fervent and more ardent before the Lord. At this moment, when death is a reality, when Daniel faced this, he did not cow, but he became bold and moved forward. He did exactly what was decreed against. He could not accept to worship a human being, however high and lofty the person is placed by human laws and constitution. They are still human. The Lord is God and is only one to be worshipped by those who know the truth. Friends, men may be good. They may do us all things that we enjoy. They may be so, so good helping us in many ways. But when it comes to matters that can severe your relationship with God, you better choose God, even if they will take away whatever they have given you. This is what Daniel is teaching us. And this is why Daniel could thrive. Daniel had come through transition. Transition is defined as the process. A process or a period of changing from one state to another. It, is, it could be physical or biological changes which come as a result of growth and development. But there are still transitions. Transition can also come in terms of jobs. When you apply and you, you move from one job to another, or if you are promoted, or maybe transferred from one station to another. Transitions happen. Others are natural, biological. At times it comes when, after we have prepared ourselves for life, we have served our terms. We must be bid farewell into retirement from whichever positions we held in government. Tears will roll as you leave friends and colleagues and go into another phase of your life. Transitions are constant. Changes and crises a part of life and any believer is not deceived that 
things will remain constant simply because I trust in God. God allows them. God allows them. The Lord, our God, who loved and who had blessed Daniel and his three colleagues, three friends in Jerusalem, maybe they studied in one school under one rabbi. Maybe they were in the royal palace prepared to take up roles, but with a bang, the Babylonians came and overthrew Jerusalem. And with that overthrow of Jerusalem, breaking the walls, they took Daniel and his three friends. Away from family, away from the temple, away from the royal palaces where they were being trained, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were taken captive, caught up in forced transition from freedom in Judah to captivity in Babylon. Daniel became a servant in a foreign king palace. Daniel's journey affords us valuable tips for success in transition by observing what he did, not only to survive, but to thrive, we can face our transition and change our crisis with confidence and also succeed. My friend, we have new situation. We have things that change in our life on on constant basis. We adopt new cultures when we move. And so we see in the life of Daniel that even as they went, they did not keep quiet among their captors, but they spoke out even in this foreign land as captives in Babylon. The background of this story is that in 539 to around 530 BC, Darius and Cyrus overthrew the Babylonian kingdom. And these maids and passions had rules which they say could not be changed. But human rules, however much we lift them and say they cannot be altered, there is a God who can alter them. Despite their degree, God can degree against human-made rules that are against God. In this, we see that Daniel, who served in the times of Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel, who served in the time of Belshazzar, who became foolish as a young man and started, you know, lavishing and indulging in drinking to a time that he fell, that his their gods were greater than the gods of Israel, the creator of heaven and earth, and commanded that these vessels of the holy temple, although broken in Jerusalem, the God of Israel was still alive, and his commandments that those vessels were to be used by priests could not be overruled. Not by any power. However powerful that kingdom is, they cannot change the rules and the commandments of God. The Bible remains and the things that are holy are holy because God commands that they are holy. 
It doesn't matter who holds them. If they are abused, God will judge, and he judged Belshazzar. And Belshazzar died, and Darius and Cyrus ruled over the world. It was in this moment, with this transition from Jerusalem to Babylon, to learning, being faithful, to completing his studies after three years, being ten times better than the, 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 the students that were together in training, these four were elected and given higher positions. In these higher positions, as, as Daniel and his friends became faithful, as Daniel and his friends obeyed God and served him, even when they were cast in the furnace, this transition prepared them for other crises that would face them in life. It is for that reason, my friend, that indeed when we study the life of David, we can believe that you and I, when we believe in the God of Daniel, in the God of Israel, in Yahweh, the Lord who is Lord God, King of heaven and earth, who rules even over the hearts of men and kings, we can be saved in God's hands. You know, Daniel, in this hostile environment, in this beckon people, we see him not wavering, not weakening, in his relationship with God. He trusted in the Lord. He became a man who was the one who encouraged his friends. Friends, in Daniel 1, because of obeying God, because of choosing to remain with their culture in a foreign land, eating the food that God allowed, not allowing to be intoxicated in their minds, they became the blessing of the world. In chapter 3, despite being thrown into the furnace, the three became the witnesses of God. And so I want to let you know, my brother, that if God allows any crisis in your life, if God allows that there be changes in anything, even in your workplace, be it a promotion, a transfer, how you handle it as you go to God will determine whether you are his witness or you are, are, are afraid of men and conniving and trying to avoid being a witness wherever God wants to send you. Don't resist. Stand firm. Even in crisis, the Lord will only use that crisis to glorify his name. And so we see that there is crisis in movement and transition in culture. Yes, most of us, especially in this time, approached for a hand in marriage by a community that is so distant. You have not learned the language. You will have culture shock. You may move to countries away, but those who are faithful, they will do expectations and the Lord will be with them wherever they go. Fear not. Fear not. Cultures that are there. And so 
As Christians or believers, we should expect crisis. As youth in their formative years, Daniel and his friends were separated from family. They were taken captive, yet in this foreign country, with the captors, he served. He declared the prophecies. He gave advice. He did not advise contrary to what God was revealing. We remain faithful even in trials. We remain faithful even in crisis. The Lord expects us not to do anything that is contrary to good. But even in this world where we may be suffering, even after being left without a promotion for a long time, don't change your character. Remain faithful because in serving faithfully, you are serving your Lord. Brother, I want to encourage you that when there is transition, when there is movement, that when you have crisis in life, remain steadfast. Daniel and his friends did not indulge themselves in the intoxicating drinks of the king. Even if they were given permission, they said, no, we will eat our food as we have been eating and drink water, not wine. You do better, oh young men. You do better to remain faithful and to be a temperate young man who knows that this intoxicating liquor or drinks will make your mind perform dismally. Keep your mind and body at its best. Let your body be used for the glory of God. Don't be like Belshazzar who indulged in wine and women and only lived his life and as a king for the shortest period. You only demean yourself. You only cut short your influence by engaging and indulging in these things. Your parents worked hard, saved, gave you this education made sure that you become someone of substance in this world, not for you to use these God-given prayerfully blessings that your parents give to make yourself a hallowed, to dance almost naked in these parties, to sleep around young people, we have a God who watches every step of our life. As gracious and as unmerciful as he is, he is a judge. Let's choose and dare to be like Daniel. Let's choose and dare to remain faithful despite the transitions. They were faithful even when God had let them down. Thank God for the Psalms lesson that we can sing the songs of Zion in a strange land. Yes, we can sing. I want to let you know that when transitions happen, when transitions happen and you move into a new environment, and you get into new neighborhood, and you are there with new workers, fellow workers, the best you can do, like, the best you can do, like Daniel and his friends, the best you can do is to learn and learn fast. Daniel and his friends 
Though they had their own, their own system of education in Jerusalem, when they go to Babylon, they did not close their minds. Their attitude was readiness to learn, acquire knowledge and skills as they prayed to God. And God blessed them in that learning and they were the best. In this world, my friend, my young daughter, my son, fill your mind with all the knowledge you can acquire. You will use that knowledge to be a blessing because all truth is God's truth no matter where it is found. And God is a God of truth. All science and true science are a blessing and when we apply them, we can solve man's greatest challenges and we can become a blessing like Daniel and his friends. Take the best of it. This is how to drive, to thrive in crisis and transition. There is a unique crisis that comes with position, that comes with power, that comes with money. This is the position and the crisis of power or position. If we are not under God, if we are not humble, if we are not patient and humble under the rule of God, this may turn to be a curse. Daniel and his friends, when they were favored, their colleagues were envious and they tried to malign them. But they remained faithful and told the king in chapter 3, O oh, king, be it known to you that even if you have said no one will set us free, and even if God will let us burn in your furnace, we will not worship your image. Know this, O king, you do not need to bleed with us to, for the musician to sing again. No, there's no need. We will not bow down and worship your image. Fidelity in the Lord, despite position, is the safest way to travel the journeys of this world. Being faithful and trusting God as these Hebrew boys is what will make us succeed and leave an impact. Leave a legacy that is worth copying. I want to say that Darius was flattered. He was fooled by the praises of this corrupt man. By telling him, live forever. When he knew that all the kings that were before him died. But you know men, when they are at their best, when they are enjoying, at times they forget that they are men and they may want to be worshipped. There is peril in power and the only safety is to know that there is a higher power and to subject ourselves to that higher power. Daniel discovered Ali and he used his power, his position with his friends for the blessing of the nation of Israel. And God was worshipped even in moments of crisis that endangered their life. They were ready to be killed so that the name of the Lord would be glorified. The Lord is calling us to be his witnesses despite our own Parents, despite the crisis we have to endure, 
despite the pain that we have to go through, if we are humble and dependent on the Lord, the Lord shall be glorified even in our pain, in our loss, in our crisis, and in this transition, the name of the Lord shall be glorified. The jealousy and the envy of these evil colleagues of Daniel. This is a common thing in this world. This is in every corridor, and politics exist everywhere. But you know, when faith and values are inculcated in our life, when we live this faith, it will affect how we walk. Because ethics and productivity are not accidental. They are products of decisive actions by those who want to be moral and to be people of integrity. No wonder those who trust God are given positions of responsibility when the nation want to have people who will guide the nation in the proper way. They will look for those who are men of integrity. Are you one? We see Daniel being declared that he distinguished himself. He was a man of honesty. He was a man who had thrust, trustworthiness. He had these traits and with these traits he was distinguished because the nation did not lose but the nation flourished and the king Gain. Oh, for men who can stand like Daniel when our economy is crumbling. Oh, for men who as governors will appoint those who can give account and protect the wealth of the nation. Oh, may God give us and make our, our leaders our president, our governors, to be people who will manage resources for the blessing of the nation. I want to let you know, whoever you are, whatever position you occupy, like these governors who scheme to destroy Daniel, God is a God of judge. He's a judge. He's a God of fairness. And he will re bring retribution. He will repay back. Even if you may still, you better begin to be honest. Because even if you steal as much as you steal, even if in your corruption you may want your children to acquire whatever, whatever you will leave may be what will destroy your family. How many have turned to be derelicts, useless people because of money? Cheap, easy money corrupts and corrupts absolutely because it was gotten corrupt in a corrupt way. And so, be warned whoever you are that if you are in a position and you hurt an arm, those who have done the work in the tenders that are given in the counties, which have impoverished most of many families because of people in position asking for, for, for bribes so that people can be paid. I am telling you there's a God in heaven 
In as much as these people may be suffering and their businesses folding because of you, as you pay tenderpreneurs who have not done any job, the Lord will repay full at your laps. And the Lord will give another way to those who have done the work faithfully. As they cry, the Lord will hear their prayers and he will lift them up through the crisis that you have caused them. But you will reap, my friend. You will reap. Let me conclude by asking this question. Why does God allow evil things to happen to his faithful? I want to recap and tell you, my friend, in this chapter, the king who had esteemed Daniel as a distinguishable man, this king who declared to Daniel that his faith was not a crime. This king who was, was, was happy to have Daniel and therefore here we see that he told Daniel that the God you have served faithfully may he protect you. Ultimately when God saved Daniel from the, 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 the fears jaws of the lions. When he went in the morning, he called and he somehow trusted that because Daniel was faithful and faultless, a honest man, he called and said, Daniel, has the God you serve protected you from the ravenous beast and when Daniel answered and said, long live the king. Indeed, the Lord kept and closed the mouths of the lion, and I am saved. The king jubilantly commanded that Daniel be brought out of the den. And then, with that, because God is a judge, the schemers, the plotters, were cast in the den. Friends, whatever we do, whatever plans we make, be sure that if it is not good, if it is not God intended, you will reap it. May I request the choristers to come so that we can sing the song I need thee every hour. And let me conclude by stating this. That when God allows us to suffer, when God allows crisis in our life, it is evangelistic in intention. God intends that the experience we have had, even when he allows whatever comes, we can have new experience with him and know that his power is still as efficacious as before. God again allows us to go through whatever we go through. And even in transitions that we have in this world, when we are faithful, God allows us to go through it for future encouragement of the saints. Finally, God delivers and judges. He is a faithful God. Another lesson that we learn is that accept transition and crisis, whatever it way it comes, it is the only way we can be saved. Remain faithful and learn whatever lessons you can wherever you have been blessed and become a blessing. Lesson number three, God allows crisis for us to be instruments of witnessing to his power and glory. And finally, 
glorification and judgment follows any crisis. Doesn't matter what we are going through, when we are faithful, the Lord will finally glorify us and judge those who have been wicked and evil. 